Well, switching topics, Jeremy, two puzzle bombs were intercepted recently, apparently on the way from Yemen to synagogues in Chicago. What do we know about those bombs so far? Well, for the past two years, really, if you talk to people in the special operations community or if you follow the communications from al-Qaeda, the group in Yemen, al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula, uh, they're sort of like the coolest kids on the block in al-Qaeda right now. They put out an English-language magazine called Inspire. Anwar al-Awlaki, this U.S. citizen who is a cleric in Yemen, is based there. Their influence is growing throughout the, uh, the radical Islamic world, and, and there are guys within the special forces community that have been pushing and agitating for years for a greater U.S. military presence there. In, in reality, in reality, though, Laura, the U.S. has already been striking in Yemen for a couple of years. They've hit the country a number of times with uh, Tomahawk cruise missile strikes. Uh, teams from the Joint Special Operations Command have been engaged in what are called kinetic operations on the ground, where they're actually hunting down and killing individuals that they say are allied with um, al-Qaeda. Uh, and so with the, with the um, news that there were potentially parcel bombs that were placed on cargo planes, or maybe some of them were at, at a time on passenger planes, I don't think it came as a big surprise to people that had been following this. Um, and, and I think that many Many of, uh, of the people in Yemen that are allied with al-Qaeda of the Arabian Peninsula um, would perceive the United States as already going to war against them. So it could be that this is a potential blowback that we're seeing. The other message we've been hearing, and this came out of the UK over the weekend, was this was a, the, the, the stopping of these bombs was a great example of collaboration and good work <laughs> amongst different parties. And the US has been talking about its relationship with security right. forces in Yemen. Well, um, what's the nature of that I mean, relationship? Yemen is, is, could hardly be called uh, a government at all. Uh, I mean, this is, this is a very fragile, fake government that's propped up largely by the US and Saudi governments. We have to remember, too, when we talk about the Saudis giving this intelligence to the United States. Most of the 9-11 hijackers are from Saudi Arabia. Uh, the Saudis also are deeply involved on the ground in Yemen and have their own agenda there. So while there's all this praise being heaped on the Saudi intelligence operation for, for uh, warding off this, uh, this threat of these bombs, we also have to dig much deeper into, into Saudi's perspective on this because uh, they regularly are engaged in cross-border bombings and incursions into Yemen, and they hardly are an objective player in this. So I would be very, very careful in taking at face value anything the Saudis say about the situation in Yemen. And to ask that dread question, why? Why, if indeed these uh, parcel bombs came from uh, al-Qaeda in, in Yemen, what about the U.S. record there? You talked about strikes. Who have they been striking? And didn't we get a story last year? Was it December of a U.S. strike killing 42 civilians? Yeah, there have been several very deadly strikes uh, that even the Yemeni authorities say um, hit civilians in that country. And I think that uh, this is being perceived in much of the Arab and Muslim world um, as another sort of paper tiger war that the United States is waging against a very soft ally. Uh, what the U.S. is doing in Yemen is training their so-called elite special forces, but in reality it's a cover for the United States to have its own, op its own operatives on the ground. Uh, the big story now is whether or not the CIA is going to take the lead on U.S. military operations in Yemen, and that's significant, Laura, because if the CIA does it, it's going to be very hard for the Congress to oversee it, and it also means that the President has much more uh, 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 space to conduct military actions uh, where he wouldn't uh, if he was uh, just simply going through the U.S. military chain of command. And finally, based on your recent reporting on the ground in Afghanistan and what is leading to support for the Taliban, not love for their ideology mostly, um, what do you think would encourage or discourage the growth of al-Qaeda in Yemen? Well, I think that in the case of, of Afghanistan, there's very little knowledge of what's happening outside of the borders of that country. There, is a, there are very high rates of illiteracy. People aren't in tune to the Israel-Palestine issue. It's very much viewed as yet another case of a foreign empire or foreign occupier coming in. So I think that the way to diffuse any kind of potential terrorism from Afghanistan has very little to do with uh, what happens outside of Afghanistan. I think it has to do with removing what's perceived to be a U.S. occupation and allowing the Taliban to actually engage in, in negotiations with the Karzai government. The Taliban people we talked to said that it's a non-starter if the U.S. is there. They don't have anything against Hamid Karzai other than that they don't, they don't like him very much, but they're willing to talk to him if the U.S. leaves. And Yemen? And in the case of Yemen, I think that, that it has everything to do with the perception that the U.S. and Israel are ganging up 
on the Muslim and Arab world. Um, I also think that what the U.S. is doing in Yemen is really inflating the prominence of al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, this is a group that probably would have very little street value in the Arab street or the Muslim street if the United States wasn't propping up Anwar al-Awlaki as the sort of second coming of Osama bin Laden. I, I think it, it, it goes to show how little we've learned from the boogeyman days of, of Bush and Cheney and how our own policies uh, endanger us more in many cases than al-Qaeda's policies. Jeremy Scahill is the author of Blackwater, The Rise of the World's Most Dangerous Mercenary Army. That too. Army out in a new edition, as I understand it now, and also of the new cover story in The Nation magazine, Killing Reconciliation.